So today we're here to call on both provincial and federal governments and the CNLOPB to immediately halt the expansion of oil and gas developments on valuable fishing grounds. Last week, the CNLOPB uh, released a call for two new offshore oil and gas uh, expansions and exploration areas. So one is actually in a marine refuge. The other happens to be on some of the uh, most valuable fishing grounds around our province. So over the past number of years, fish harvesters have consistently been ignored by both our governments and regulators when they speak out about issues relating uh, to the impact of oil and gas on their livelihoods and their operations. Time after time, oil and gas has been put ahead uh, of the fishery. Fish harvesters generally understand the, the value and the importance of oil and gas to our province but it should not be expanded at the expense of a renewable, sustainable uh, fish harvest that is something that is the reason we're here, has been decades of our main industry, and it's going to be here long after the last uh, drop of oil is taken out of the grounds. So that's if we don't mess things up. So we'll hear in a moment from, uh, from the harvesters who are going to be directly impacted if these developments continue. At no time were these harvesters consulted about how these further developments would impact their futures and their livelihoods and their individual fishing enterprises. So year after year, our industry is expected to adjust and adapt to the expansion of oil and gas development with no consideration no consideration whatsoever for what those impacts are on the harvesters themselves and also the marine environment, which is obviously so important to many. So we have drilling, we have seismic activity, uh, there's exclusion zones around oil installations that are pushing harvesters further and further afield. And these recently announced areas could take tens of millions of dollars away from the harvesters uh, the people, the families that uh, these representatives here are, are here on behalf of. So that's revenue from our communities and primarily our rural communities. Uh, on top of the loss of valuable fishing grounds, the new area is also in areas where uh, our most important science survey for snow crab, a post-season survey takes place and now more than ever our science on our snow crab resource is absolutely vital. So with the recent announcement from the CNL OPB, fish harvesters are once again been told just move aside, get out of the way. The oil industry and governments are saying that fish harvesters don't matter. Traditional fishing grounds don't matter. Their futures don't matter and their communities don't matter. And at this point in time, we're not going to stand for that. It's absolutely not acceptable and harvesters won't stand for it. The fishing industry contributes $1.5 billion to the provincial economy, mostly, like I said, in rural communities. So we demand the respect, consideration when it comes to the offshore de development. And we absolutely refuse to just be brushed aside, moved away, and refuse to be ignored any longer. The FFAW Uniform is calling on the CNLPB to immediately withdraw the call for nominations for this area to allow time for adequate consultations with affected harvesters as well as to cease exploration in areas designated as marine refuges. We're also calling for a joint meeting between fish harvesters, Natural Resources Minister Siobhan Cody, and the CNLOPB. So we have to outline our concerns, concerns that harvesters have, and ensure that these are actually respected and acted upon. So right now, I'll pass it over to uh, Nelson Bussey to say some words on uh, you know, how it'll affect your enterprise in particular and go into more detail. Yes, good day, uh, thanks for coming. I've been a fish harvester for 43 years and I've been fishing this particular area that uh, got up for nominations. 
and a fleet that I'm representative, like we've been fishing, this is one of our prime fishing areas. I would say it's probably the hardest spot in the world for crab fishing. And uh, to know that our government is actually offering up this parcel of land for oil exploration, like what is that saying to the fishing industry? Like two years ago, me and Keith, we met with Minister Cody in our office and we explained them to the Minister Cody by our concerns, like, it is our livelihood, it's the, it's the fishermen, it's the plant workers, crew members, like it's the full communities. And like everything is not oil, like I, we know oil is important to Newfoundland, but it's more than oil than Newfoundland, like we got a fishing history. And for us to sit there today and know that our government is just going to say bye, forget the fishing industry, no consultations, just no nothing. It seems like we almost got to have a showdown and right now like we're in the situation now where our members is just not going to sit by and let this happen. And if they want to show it out, I guess that's what they'll have. Because consultations is not working. My name is Glenn Winslow. I'm a fish harvester here in St. John's. I've been fishing since I'm 18 years old, so I guess it's 39 years. Uh, we operate a 65-footer that uh, fishes anywhere from 100 to 250 miles off in Trial where this uh, exploration is taking place. Uh, what really is upsetting to us is, I guess, you know, I've, atten I've attended lots of meetings where we've told them in the past that uh, consultation is important. It has to change. It's like, it's the same thing again. Last night I find out about this oil exploration and parcels of land being given out for bids and we know nothing about it again. It's not right, it's wrong, it's totally wrong. We have two inter industries here. We have one industry that's, uh, uh, that's fishery based that's been carried on for decades in Newfoundland and Labrador that have sustained not only rural Newfoundland, but you know, like the, all of Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, we have Two industries competing against one another, one that's so beneficial in all ways around. You know, it's a renewable resource that brings new dollars into the country. That's what the fishery have done for probably 500 years. And we got another industry that if you listen to what's happening in the world now, is so detrimental to the world. And it seems like our government has picked a detrimental one over the the historical one that's been so lucrative for our province. And that's very disappointing for us. Like I said, and Nelson said, this area, if you went back and looked over the last 10 years, the history of the resource, this area has been our most lucrative area. Where cuts have came in the crab, and I'm sure you all know about it, not in this area, very small. The, the, the science on this area and the catch per unit effort hasn't changed in 20 years. It's like Nelson said to you, it's probably one of the most productive areas for crab in the world. In the world. And we've, as harvesters, invested millions of dollars, millions, to stay in this industry. And when you take on that debt, you don't take it on for two or three years, you take it on for life. And that's what we've done. And to find out that our government is not supporting us, the same government that back in 2007 started consultations on, on uh, uh, to rationalize the industry. The same government that came out with rules and regulations to rationalize the industry and ask us to invest in the industry to rationalize it and are turning around and now really putting us out of business. I'm sorry, we can't stand idly by and watch that happen. And uh, you know, if they're not going to meet with us and, and like, it's not only meet with us, it's got to be beneficial consultations that they're listening and they're, and we can see action that they're doing something to address it. If they're not, I'm afraid, like Nelson said, there's going to be consultation and it's, it's not going to be nice consultation. Thank you. Or confrontation. Hi, I'm Andrew Daly, uh, representing a, a large group of offshore harvesters. I'm a career fisherman, and uh, the areas that are being offered here for oil development is where I fished a few months ago, is where I fished a few years ago, is where I fished a few decades ago. 
several decades ago we've been harvesting those areas. These are, the, these are our prime fishing grounds. Science has taken 50% of our quotas over the last five years, <clears throat> but not out of these areas. So these are our prime fishing grounds. And, and I say to all the harvesters that we just can't let this happen, that we're going to get pushed off for prime fishing grounds. Uh, so we're prepared to do what we got to do to protect our fishing grounds. And what that's going to be, whether, we, whether we, we sit down and talk it out. But the, 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 the frustrating thing has been told here this morning is this has happened and we haven't been consulted. Uh, surely there have got to be people in all sides of this industry that can look at a map and see where the prime harvesting is done and it hasn't been done in the pri the, our, our prime fishing, crab fishing grounds and other species as well is now being offered as a development. We just can't have that developed. We just can't have a pile of oil rigs dotted around in our prime grounds where we lose circles of 20 miles or 10 miles of exclusion zones. Let them find somewhere else to develop. There's, there's acres and acres out there, but we got to get this off the board. The government, our, our members, federal, provincial, must get this out of, out of the system. This, this is our prime fishing grounds and it just can't be given away on the fishermen. So we'll, we'll be doing whatever we got to do to prevent this. Thank you.